this video demonstration, we're going to explore the mannequin model in 3D Coat and see how you can use it as a starting point for your character sculpts. You could also use the individual components that are found in the mannequin folder here in the models palette to bring in individual components. Uh, for example, if you already have a model that you're currently working on, but perhaps you want to redo the hand or maybe use the feet or the head or something of that nature, uh, you can quickly bring these in and they should come in exactly the same location that you see the model now, the way it was saved. And all these are individual digits on the hand. So for the leg, the head, and so on. So you can use these as individual starting points, as segments or, or sub-objects or you could use the entire model as a 3D file. You also have the option, if you like, to uh, at any point in time take a layer, right click, and save the volume as a 3D coat file. The .3B is a native 3D coat file that uh, will come in exactly as it is in the scene. Same shader, the same scale, same position, same name, resolution, everything. The only thing it won't have is all the other layers, unless you happen to have one that has child layers. And so 3D Coat gives you the option to save this layer with all its hierarchy as an individual file as well. So if I wanted to save just the arm and all the hand sub-elements as well, that's what I would do here, is choose the arm, right-click, save volume to .3D file. Okay, so with all that done, let's take a look at how we might manipulate uh, this model uh, to get started. So what you can do is more easily modify individual components as opposed to having to try to, uh, using the pose tool with gradients and so on, you can still do that uh, because with the pose tool you have the ability to select through all volumes. So for example, if I wanted to use this line, I could, let's say if I choose the pelvis here, and uh, before I go any further, I do need to stop and mention that when using the pose tool, I find, at least as of this recording, at this point, it really does not like instances. Uh, I get some odd behavior. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete the instances that I currently have. So most of these will have an extension with IMST, uh, so it's easy to spot. So you can just delete that entire chain. Same thing with the arm. In that hierarchy, it has the arm instance, and that includes the entire chain here. So I'll just delete that layer. So now I shouldn't have to worry. Now, when working with the pose tool, it uh, is much more predictable. So uh, once you've made the pose, then it's much easier to go back and with the instancer you can always choose a uh, new mirror. Oops, I'm sorry. Make sure I'm on the right layer. I'm going to do that. Choose the arm layer, new mirror cross X. Okay. So again, I'll delete that layer. And uh, yeah, so we can use the pose tool if we need to uh, multi-select and so what I'll do here is I'll go from the uh, hip area because I want a, a kind of a gradient deformation in this area and almost solid deformation here okay so let's click here in the groin area and go all the way up through uh, the midsection. I'm sorry, let me check through all volumes. Make sure I'm on the right layer. I'll try this again. Okay. Alright. So now if you have this, you can always switch to select my object or select with pen. Choose maybe a freeform lasso here. Okay. 
I want to make sure ignore back faces is unchecked because I want to go all the way through. So I'll try this again. All right. Looks good so far. And uh, now what I can do is just change the transform mode and go ahead and spin this object. As you can see, this gradient is uh, reacting as you would expect if you're using a bone system. Okay, so with that done, let's go ahead and uh, just work with a regular transform tool. Okay, I'll choose the lower arm and it will work with all of its child layers. So it works in the sense that uh, the arm layer here actually has geometry. It's the contains the upper arm. So this is the first link in the chain. The other, the top two layers that you see here, the mannequin parent, okay, is really just an empty parent layer, much like if you are working with a, a rig uh, in another 3D application, you might have like a platform uh, control object. Okay, same thing with this empty layer here. I can further modify the entire upper portion of the body here. Okay. But from this point on, all the appendages, such as the arm and the leg, the parent layer actually contains a first segment or a first object in the chain. So it's actually geometry. You can see that at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and again go to the lower arm and choose move only gizmo in a future hopefully the next build there will be the capability to hold the shift key to toggle temporarily move only gizmo so that you don't have to continuously move back and forth between the viewport and the panel okay so we'll go back here try to put that where and in the center of this I can just move in screen space okay same thing here and I can grab this little ring and as soon as it's highlighted I can spin it to quickly <clears throat> try and get this gizmo aligned as best as possible not to be too fussy with it but I want to get relatively close all right so now I'll check that and again if I I can use the handles here or I can be perpendicular to the angle that I want to move or rotate it in and just use this green space handle here. Okay, that works good enough for me. And uh, let's go to the hand, again, center mass. And again, with only gizmo, I'm just going to try to wing this instead of spending a lot of time. straight okay so yeah you can quickly get things posed the way you want and then use the move tool to further modify or to bring these back into shape so let's go to the lower arm uncheck through all volumes because posing the move tool both allow you to move through all volumes so Let's go ahead and try to move that into place here. Right click, drag left and right to scale down the brush. Okay, so that's fine. We're just trying to get, just like you would a mannequin on your desktop, if you're using it to give you a rough estimation of a pose 
if you're animating a character. You can then shift drag layers onto another to merge them together. You have options also to merge visible, merge subtree, and so on. But um, yeah, so like the midsection, I could drag select to upper torso, and now it is one piece. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the fill tool here. So now you have your starting point, and um, can you use build, maybe. Okay, just going to block in some rough forms here. In fact, we're not going to spend much time on this. Uh, rather, we're going to go ahead and skip forward to a uh, pose model. And uh, obviously, this one has not yet uh, had all the gaps uh, filled in and so on in between uh, the seams, but. Nevertheless, uh, we're much further along than if we were trying to work with just primitives. Hope this helps and um, really look forward to seeing some character sculpts in 3D Code. Thank you for watching.